Book summary apps, are they actually worth it? In today's video, we're actually gonna be breaking down these book summary apps, specifically short form, and to see if you should invest into it or not. You've probably seen the ads while scrolling on IG with the 30 day reading challenges, the overwhelming amount of features, and the endless number of competitor or lookalike apps. I'm here today, not only bring it all together, but this will be the only video that you need to watch about any book summaries or any book guide apps, and more importantly, whether short form is the best book summary for you. So in today's video, we're going to specifically break down the three problems with traditional reading. What exactly is a book summary app? What the difference between all the book summary apps are? The pros of short form, the cons of short form, and who would benefit from something like short form? Timestamps below. Just for full disclosure and transparency, they did not sponsor this video, but they let me try out their software for free. If you end up deciding on short form, I have an affiliate link that will give you a special deal from them but seriously please don't waste your money if you're not going to use this or benefit from this at all so let's get into it so let's first talk about the problems with traditional reading problem one reading takes way too long in the modern day it takes almost five and a half hours to read about 200 pages for the average person and most people read completely wrong to begin with an average reader will just glance their eyes through the pages just to finish it and brag to their friends but guess what no one cares that you flip through some pages just to say that you've read it an intelligent reader they read a little bit differently compared to podcasts or audiobooks Reading is an active experience. When you read a book, the author is condensing the last 5, 10, or even 50 years of experience into a 200 page book. So you're essentially getting the best ideas that are distilled from an author or a thought leader for just 10 to 20 bucks. And when I read, I read a bit at a time, stop and think about how does this apply to my life if it does at all. This critical thinking process makes you a lot smarter. So when it comes to something like audiobooks, your boy is not gonna pause the audiobook just so that I can think. No one got time for that. Problem two, there are, are way too many books to read. There's over 2,700 books being published every single day in the US. So there's no way that you can read everything. Reading isn't cheap either. Books not only cost us our money, but more importantly, they cost us our energy and time investment as well. And the traditional way that we're taught in school is reading it from front to back. For me, I'll read the first 10 pages and get bored, take a break, grab some coffee, get distracted with some YouTube videos and come back saying, I'll read this next week, only to find that I never get back to reading that book ever again. The problem is oftentimes is that we read books that aren't worth the payoff or aren't relatable in our life situation. For me, I read books because I'm a pr productivity and self-improvement junkie. I want to improve my writing and ideas. And it actually helps me apply things to improve my life and business so I don't die broke, single, alone, living at my mom's house at 30. Problem number three, you can't remember everything that you read. We can only hold so much storage. And studies show that people only remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, and 80% of what we experience. For reading, that means for every five books that I read, I pretty much forget what I read in one whole book. But fine, you can't remember the information. No big deal, right? Well, if you read James Clear's Atomic Habits, then we all know the power of tiny gains. So the problem isn't with information retention, it's being able to remember the information so that we can actually apply it into our lives and reinforce it with that 80% retention that we have. So how do we solve this problem? Over the years, I've tried doing everything from taking notes with my sticky notes over here, writing my own summaries, and even rereading these books at times. While these solutions were somewhat helpful, they weren't sustainable solutions because there was too much friction in the process. I found that I'd be so caught up with writing reviews or taking notes, that I'd be concerned that I missed something and it gave me a lot of anxiety and I would put off reading just because of the notes aspect. But what if there was a better way? Well, that's where something like book summaries or book guides come into play. So what the heck are book summary apps in the first place? At first I asked myself, well, why wouldn't someone just read the real book? It wasn't until I started playing around with these apps where I realized the true value of these apps. What I didn't realize at the time was that things like short form aren't trying to replace books. It's changing the way that we read. The problem is the modern day reader is busier than ever with more distractions. Book summary apps like Blinkist or short form 
are just trying to make the reading process a lot more efficient and solve the problems that we talked about. I recently saw this Reddit post about the benefits of something like a summary. Summaries can help you remember what you read, the most important ideas or quotes. You can decide whether it's actually worth to read the book or not. That's where these book summaries can help. But what are all the differences between the apps? The first time I saw an ad for a book summary app, it was for Blinkist on a Vanessa Lab video back in, I think, 2018. Since then, I've literally seen seen about 10 plus different apps that I found and got targeted for researching for this video. As I was comparing the apps, I found that there are five major factors between the apps. The first thing is book selection. Some apps will specialize in different niches or subject matters. Some do nonfiction. Others focus more on business or personal development. The second thing is quality or depth of the reviews. So apps like Blinkist are known for their Blink, which is basically a one pager of their book. Apps like short form, offer not only a one page review, but there's actually a chapter by chapter in detailed breakdown. Number three, there's the format of the reviews. A lot of these apps are mobile friendly. They're on iOS or on the Android app, but apps like short form have rev their reviews in PDF, audio summaries, and in-depth chapter reviews. Number four is the ability to highlight in the API integrations with Readwise. So if you ever use Kindle, one of the key features is that you can highlight your insights. You can actually do that with things like short form. And they actually integrate with Readwise, which allows you to connect it to Notion, Obsidian, or Roam, and basically build out your own personal library or database of the most valuable insights. We'll talk about more about Readwise later. And then the last factor is costs. Most of these companies have monthly subscriptions with a few of them having lifetime deals. A lot of these were new startup apps. What I found is that they didn't have the best selection and you might be waiting around for those apps to create those. So after spending hours looking and researching the different apps, what I found was that short form was the best fit for me. It wasn't necessarily a book summary app, but it was more of a book guide. It really enhanced my reading experience. And over the last two weeks, I've been actually using short form. While we could talk about features all day, let's actually talk about the pros and cons of something like short form. So one of the pros of short form is that there's high quality of information and reviews. This is the strongest strength of short form compared to other apps. It has both the option for one page reviews, similar to Blinkist, but also has an in-depth chapter review. What I found is that short form also has side notes in gray with detailed references to similar books, authors, or bodies of work. I found this very useful for adding similar books to my reading list. The second pro of short form was that it reduced my reader anxiety. Before short form, I didn't want to miss out on any major ideas on a book and I didn't want to have to read, read the book. The only problem is that this actually increased the reading time by two to three times longer because I was taking notes. That was not fun. That's where something like Readwise was very helpful for me. The reviews were so detailed that I didn't feel like the need to take fierce notes anymore. And as a result, I could relax. I can actually immerse myself in the reading versus taking notes that I would never see again. Another pro is that there's better information retention. Oftentimes I'm forgetful. Sometimes I just don't have time to reread the entire book. One of the benefits of something like short form is that a lot of the books have audio versions of their reviews where it feels like it's a book review audio book. I do like printing out the PDF files, highlighting them and listening to the audio version at 2X. Another pro was better life integration. Like I said earlier, reading isn't about flipping pages. It's about being able to apply these books into our lives. At the end of every single PDF, there's an exercise section where it asks you a few questions to reflect. Not gonna lie, it got me really deep in my feels. So recently I was reading The Courage to Be Disliked and one of the themes is, is seeking approval making you unhappy? But it also asked me, what is the smallest step that you could take from freeing yourself from those expectations? And after doing this exercise, it made me feel a lot better. And if you're more of a social type of person, there's actually a section where you can discuss with other members on short form. But also what I found was that it optimized my time spent reading. So recently I've been following Naval Ravikant and he shared that he doesn't read his books completely. A lot of times the goal for him is just to flip through the pages and explore whether an idea is worth further exploring in the first place. And I found that short form is actually really helpful for identifying areas that I want to actually read. I find that using their summaries helps me fi filter out books and decide, is this book sh that I should read now, later, or pass altogether? And the last pro, which is super nerdy, 
is the Readwise integration with things like Notion, Roam, or Obsidian. I first found out about Readwise through Ali Abdal, but basically it can help you build your own knowledge base by connecting your highlights, your notes, with the knowledge base of your choice. For me, it's Notion. I used to lug around five books in my check-in bag at the airport just because I would be writing content on the go. But nowadays when I travel, I can just open up my short form or Notion board and just review my key insights instead of lugging those books around. The overall pro of short form is that it's really detailed compared to other apps. And they even have like this night mode just in case you want to toggle, but it's not perfect. And so let's talk about the cons of something like short form. There's a max of three PDF downloads in one week, at least at the time of the shooting. This one was not a major one for me, but kind of annoying. To be honest, I don't know why they did three. Maybe they were scared that someone would download their whole library. But as someone who reads almost a book a day, this can be actually a little bit frustrating. It's not to say that you can't look at other reviews or anything like that, but if you want to download the PDF and actually print it out, you can't do this. The next part is book selection. So as I was researching some of the other apps, I found this to be a big factor in general. I have a large library. I have like four bookcases and nothing is more frustrating than looking up a book and seeing it's not there. Compared to Blinkist, short form has, I would say, fewer books. I think it's because they focus on one page blinks a lot, but short form goes a lot deeper, which kind of makes sense why they would have fewer selection of books. What I found was pretty interesting is that you can actually, if there's a book that's not available, you can request it and they're always releasing new books as well. The third con is that it's pay to play. To me, this isn't a big deal. There are a few blogs out there that give free reviews. What I found is that quality costs money. Something like short form really distills the best ideas down. Books are already a cheap investment for me compared to a course or a coaching. And oftentimes books are an investment, not an expense. Is it actually worth paying for something like short form? It definitely hasn't replaced my books completely clearly because I still have them, but it's definitely changing how I read and how much I retain. These days, I'm not flipping through a book for vanity reasons, but it's really the integration of ideas into my real life. Especially for me, since I have a business, one idea could change the trajectory of my business. If you're a casual reader, you don't really care. You don't mind reading a book over and over again. Maybe it's not for you then. But there are some people that I would actually recommend this for. So let's dive into it. Who would I recommend this for? The first group of people that I think that would actually benefit are content creators. So if you're in the education space, I found this to be one of my essential tools. I can reference books that I mentioned and the question prompts tend to spark more ideas for me for more videos. I found the book guides actually help remind me of the best ideas in a book and helps me expose me to other books too. It not only helps me create better content, but it also helps me credit the original offers as well. The second group that would really benefit from this are Notion nerds. Of course, this isn't no limited to Notion, but earlier we talked about integration with Readwise. This is very helpful if you're, you like organization, you like building your own knowledge base or building a second brain as Tiago Forte says. It allows you to save your highlights and notes. Uh, you can integrate it with the database of your choice. Third group, entrepreneurs. I think of people like Naval Ravikant, who is known for skimming his ideas and sharing them in bite-sized pieces on Twitter. The truth is a lot of entrepreneurs are busy they don't always have the time to read everything out there. Short form really helps us kind of filter which books are worth reading. In the last group, lifelong learners. If you value education, take it seriously, basically come from an Asian family, then this is worth it. If something like short form can get you started just reading more and implementing one idea like with investing, then short form can actually pay for itself in the long run. Anyways, if you want to check out short form, check out my affiliate link below in the description. I'm actually in the middle of creating a video on how to become a better reader in eight minutes. So you can watch that there. Stay compassionate, stay authentic, stay rebellious. Peace.